test. Hasn't changed yet. We will be going live at 10 a.m.
services at the Bowling Springs Church of Christ. It's a beautiful Sunday. Uh, we have a uh, few announcements before Daniel leads us in our worship service. Some good news first. Uh, Mike Rivera was baptized into Christ last week. This is uh, Susan Gutierrez's boyfriend, and Susan was also restored. <coughs> Charles and Ruby are doing some better. Also, Marie Belzer's sister um, has a tumor, and she asked that we pray for her. Also, Jerry Ham passed away this past week, which most of you know. And a um, please remember the Hams in your prayers, and a memorial service will be planned in the coming weeks. Also, this is our 2 by 4 Sunday. All the contribution will go this Sunday to the tornado victims in Tennessee. And we have already sent, as a congregation, $10,000 in advance to help them a couple weeks ago. So again, all the contribution um, for today uh, will go to... Um, for the tornado victims in, in Nashville, Tennessee, and surrounding areas. I just want to give a quick recap on a, a two by four Sunday. Uh, we started this, elders started this over six years ago, uh, started the two by four Sunday. We have sent, in the last six years, over $96,000 um, all over the world, uh, to spread the gospel. Amen. We do not know of all the hundreds or thousands that have been saved through Christ um, with your generosity. Um, Jay has set up several avenues to send your contribution. If you have any trouble with that, see uh, call Jay, send him a text or email. He'll make sure he helps you with that. I wanted to give just a quick recap uh, we have several new members that aren't aware of this. Over the past six years, we have we went on a mission trip to Panama, sent 25 of our members. Uh, that was in 2014. In 2015, we took another missionary trip to Panama, 17 members. We had a tent meeting here. We had a mission trip to Costa Rica. We sent 14 members there. We have helped the Costa Rica preaching um, school there for the past two years. Um, about ten, about ten thousand dollars per year for that. We built two church buildings in India. Uh, Michael has been to India, and we've sent uh, money there for bicycles, Bibles, water wells for the community. We've helped the widows and orphans with bedding, food supplies including big pots, water wells, water buffalo for milk, bicycles, uh, PA systems, and we've also helped um, build the uh, church building in Panama as well. That's just a snapshot of the generosity uh, from this congregation of what we've been able to do over the last six years with our 2 by 4 Sunday. Just thought that might be a little helpful, and um, let's all worship our God together. Number 499. Number 499. Who to be like blessed Redeemer? This is my constant longing and prayer. Blessed be 
Before we take the cup, I'd like to read, starting in verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's pray. Lord, once again, we come before you now. We thank you for this, this cup that represents the blood of your son as he died on the cross for our sins. We ask that we all partake in the manner that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. Six hundred sixty-five. Number six sixty-five. In the dark of the midnight, am I off in my face? While the storm has about me.
so many online, though separated by distance and in separate places, we have come together in heart and in spirit and a fellowship with each other to worship our God. Amen. And so for those who are joining us online, we say welcome. <coughs> welcome to the worship service here at the Bowling Springs Church of Christ and where you may be as you join to gather with us. How about some good news? Don't you think some good news could come in handy right now? I um, appreciate Joe sharing with everyone the, the good news of Michael's Mike's baptism yesterday and Susan's restoration. Uh, we can start out, we can start our, our day with great news there, but folks, there's more good news to come. I want you to get, um, I want you to get the coronavirus and the quarantines and all of that out of your mind for a moment. Just clear it out. I know I just reminded you, but get that out of your mind. Clear it out for a moment because we're going to focus on some things that is something to smile about, something to feel good about, and something to make us joyful. Because you see, the Christian has the capacity. To be joyful even in the hardest of circumstances. It, it amazes me as I've been with families who are at funerals, burying loved ones, and yet at peace. And even sometimes able to experience some joy with each other at those occasions. And I think sometimes people in the world might see that and say, well, what's wrong with you? There's... Your, your loved one has died. Aren't you sad? And yeah, there's sorrow. There is sadness, but there is a joy in the heart of a child of God that overcomes even the darkest of times, the darkest of moments. Because you see, we have a God in heaven. We have a Savior in Jesus Christ. We've been washed with the blood of the Lamb. We have uh, the joy of the greatest fellowship this world has ever known in the family of God. And we are going to heaven and we have something to smile about. We have something to be thankful for. And we have something that we can rejoice for this morning. I, I want you to remember 
and be reminded that God lives. He reigns and He is ultimately victorious. And if you're a child of God, you are His. That means that you share in His victory. You know, the book of Revelation can be summed up in two words. I know quite often it is said, and I have said myself, I've changed my mind about the book of Revelation. It may come as a revelation to you. Pun intended. But I, I changed my mind about it. You know, I used to say that the book of Revelation can be summed up in two words. We win. I don't say that anymore. The book of Revelation can be summed up in two words. God wins. That's what the message of the book of Revelation is. God wins. Now, if we're on God's side, we win too. And I, I find great comfort in that in knowing that, that God ultimately overcomes Satan. You know, I see sometimes times of crisis brings out the best of people and it brings out the worst of people. Or you'll see sometimes a time of crisis and you'll see looting and you'll see robbing and you'll see violence in the streets and vandalizing. And then sometimes you'll see a time of crisis and you'll see people reaching out to their neighbor and sharing and building back homes or giving of food or providing shelter. And you see... We choose how we respond to a crisis. But when we see the world, and by the same token, see a particular crisis that may happen in our life, through the lens of God and the love of God, it changes everything. When we see a crisis through the lens of faith, it changes everything. I've seen a lot of suffering. But I don't think I've ever seen anyone suffer like Job suffered. Now you talk about suffering. The loss of a child, one child, but to lose all of your children at the same day. A loss of money or to watch the stocks go down, that's bad enough. But to lose basically everything that you have, almost everything in, the, in one day. And to, to be there with only your wife and a handful of friends who have come supposedly to comfort you. Your wife ends up saying, just curse God and die. And your friends look at you and point the finger and say, well, you must be some kind of sinner and you have no one to turn to? How could Job make it through that? Here's what he said. Job chapter 19, and verses 25 and 26. Reading this from the American Standard Version. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And at last, He will stand upon the earth. And after my skin, even this body is destroyed, then without my flesh, I shall see God. No matter what happens to me, Job said, I have comfort in this one thing. I know that my Redeemer lives. You see, hard times can drive us away from God or they'll drive us to God. And for all <clears throat> who are hearing, who are listening to this message from God's Word this morning, I hope that what you hear in this message is hope if you will Come to God. If you will allow this moment, this time to drive you to God, however it might be affecting your life, then I hope that, that you will see that, that you will do that. And if that's the case, you have come out victoriously. You are the victor. You are the winner in this. And there's nothing that can take that from you. Nothing. Not 
Not even death itself. For, for the child of God, even death is victory. For those who go through life and deal with the hardships of life without a faith in God, I have great pity. The psalmist said in Psalm 14, 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And I don't say that with any kind of animosity or any kind of ridicule. Nor do I believe that's how it is given in the inspired word. It's, it's actually something to be pitied. The one hope, the one salvation, the one source of strength, the one place that you can go to find everything you need in this life and to try to live this life without Him, who is the creator of this universe, who is your creator, is foolish indeed. But you can know this, and you can rest in this, and you can take joy in this. Jesus Christ is the Savior of all who will come to Him. Now we all love John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came to this old world and he divested himself of the privileges of his deity. Took upon himself human flesh, born as a baby. And he lived this life. He got up every morning and put his feet on that cold floor or the dirt as quite often he was traveling and he started each morning just like you and I do and he faced the same temptations the same trials but I would suggest he faced so much more on a daily basis than most of us will ever face he faced Satan face to face in the wilderness and he overcame. And he was victorious so that you can be victorious. He did it for you. Don't allow Satan to steal your hope. Don't allow fear to quench your faith. Don't allow a crisis to define you. That's not who you are. You are a child of God. You are a Christian. If you have been washed with His blood. In John chapter 4, verses 41 and 42, we read that many more believed because of His own word. And He said unto the woman, and they said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So here's this, this woman who was at the well, a woman from Samaria, and she met Jesus there. And as she talked to him, she began to realize that he was the Messiah. And she runs into the city and she tells people, I've met the Messiah. And they come out to see him. And after seeing and hearing them for themselves, they believe and they tell her, you know, at first, at first we were listening to you, but now we've met it. We see for ourselves who he is. And, and I would like to invite you, if you are not a child of God, <coughs> if you have not been baptized for the remission of your sins, if you've not been added to his church, I would invite you to come to know him yourself Amen. and see for yourself the joy that he can bring to your life. See for yourself the victory that you can have through Him. You don't have to take my word for it. Study the Bible. Know His Word. Believe Him. Obey Him. Become His. In John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, 
We're told many other signs did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe in that, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing, you might have life through his name. That great confession. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. In Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch who had been to Jerusalem to worship was coming, was, was headed back home and the Spirit told Philip to go to him and he ran and he overtook the chariot. He asked him if he understood what he was reading. He said, how can I so much show me as he read that suffering servant passage from Isaiah about Jesus. Then he said, he said, is this man speaking of himself or someone else? And the scripture tells us that Philip began at that scripture and taught unto him Jesus. Next verse says, he came to a body of water and he said, see here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he spoke these words, this true confession, this true confession of that truth that we just read. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And they went down to the water. And there Philip baptized him. And they came out of the water. The Spirit called away Philip. So that the eunuch saw him no more. But he went on his way rejoicing. He was rejoicing. Why was he rejoicing? Because he just met the Savior. He had just encountered the blood of Jesus Christ, the waters of baptism, as he died to his sinful self, was buried with Christ, as Jesus died on the cross and was buried in the tomb, and rose with him victoriously to a new life. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 5 tells us that that's what happens in baptism. You too can be victorious through Jesus Christ. If you will name that great confession, and be baptized with Him for the remission of your sins. I want to share with you another thing from the Word of God that is good news. All things, all things, all things work together for good for God's people. Romans chapter 8 verse 28, we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, and to them who are the called according to His purpose. You see, no matter where you are, no matter what you're facing, no matter what's going on in this life, you can know that as a child of God that there is good to be found. Yeah. Always. Even in the darkest of circumstances, there is good to be found. You know, I, I'm watching... <clears throat> I'm watching and I'm seeing, I'm seeing the Word of God because of what's going on in the world today. I'm seeing the Word of God being taken to the world in a way that I've not seen in my lifetime. Whether it be preachers, elders, teachers, members, people are taking to Facebook, to social media, and they're spreading the Word of God and broadcasting it in a way that I've never seen. That's good, folks. That's good. People are realizing, they're, they're hearing, and they're seeing that in the darkest of times, I can turn to God. Here's some more good news for you. There's this beautiful place called heaven. And Jesus said that he was going to prepare it for his, his people, his home. He said in John chapter 14, he said, let, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again. And receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Here we are, but strange pilgrims. We're just passing through this world, folks. We're just passing through. This isn't home. And stop acting like it is. It isn't. This isn't home. Home awaits us. 
this is our pilgrimage. And as we're on this journey, our goal, our role, our challenge is to pick up as many people as we can and take them with us. Because we're going to heaven. What's the worst that can happen to a Christian? When heaven is your goal. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. We are reminded of this truth, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. With that in mind, we are reminded in 1 Peter 2 verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. <clears throat> that means we're not home yet. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. I'm going to say it again. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. And one day you're going to lay this old body down. One day you're going to take off this garment, you're going to shed this tent, you're going to fold it up, you're going to lay it to rest, it will go back to the dirt from which it came, but you will go on. Where are you going? Amen. That's the question. Where are you going? With that in mind, we are reminded to keep our eyes on heaven, keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, and to not stray from this journey. Here's some more good news. God is faithful, and he keeps us in his care. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know who I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. I know who I have believed. I know that he is able. I know that he has the power. Listen, I don't understand what's going on in the world today. I don't know why it's going on. I'm not going to attribute motives to God or to Satan or to anyone about what's happening in this world. But this I know. God is in control. And this I know. The world has a choice right now to turn to Him or to reject Him. And I suggest that you turn to Him because you will face Him on the day of judgment. And He can give you the comfort. He can give you the strength. He can give you what you need now to carry on, to go forward. Child of God, now's a good time for you and I to look at ourselves and to see where we stand in the midst of all of this. To see if our goal is heaven. To see if we are living this life spiritually or carnally. Because we don't belong here. This world has nothing to offer us. Our home is in heaven. God is in control. And you give yourself to Him. And yours is the victory. Regardless of what happens in this world. But my friend, when you live with that knowledge, you live with faith, not fear. You do not let fear control you. You live by faith. Regardless of what happens in this life to this old body, a child of God will have a new body in heaven. First John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 
I don't know what that is. John didn't even know what that was. Inspired by the Holy Spirit at the time. I guess he does now. But I know it's wonderful. The idea, the very thought that I could be as Jesus is. Not in the sense that he's deity, of course. But in that spiritual being, that spiritual body that, that I'll be given that never decays, doesn't hurt, never gets sick. Abides in the presence of God forever and ever. That's something to be happy about. That's something to rejoice about. You see, we have passed already from death to life. The child of God never dies. The faithful child of God never dies. You see, you already did. Everybody dies. But the faithful child of God has already died. When they died to that old man of sin, Amen. were born anew in Christ to live forever. Not in this body. Your body does not define you. You live forever in Christ. When you shed this old tent and you move on and you go home, oh, how wonderful that will be when we get there. First John chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. Now's a good time to show that love. I'm seeing some things on Facebook between some of my preaching brethren that doesn't show much love right now. And I'm talking, if you're listening, to you right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing some condemning churches because of choices that they have made to try to deal with the current crisis. And I'm seeing others condemn those people and bestow upon them evil motives. And I don't believe either is true. I believe that everybody's trying to do the best that they know how, and nobody knows all the answers. All you can do is the best you can do. Please, please, let's have some grace. Let's show love at this time. Satan cannot win this battle. If he divides us, if we are ruled by fear, if we accuse, And he wins. But if we treat each other graciously, if we share with each other the love of God, if we do the very best that we can to be true to the scriptures and deal with this situation the best that we know how, and we will move past this point, it will be a moment in history, hopefully very soon, and we'll look back and remember it, but we'll move on. But if it divides us, we will be scarred for years. You and I, all of us, have a role to play in that. My question is, what role are you playing in that? Let's love each other. And God loves us. You see, we've got too much to be thankful for. We have too much to be joyful for. Well, this isn't a time for fear, folks. This is a time to shine. A shine. I want to sing a song. Daniel's going to lead us. A song of encouragement, it's an invitation song. Most of the folks engaged in this worship are online. This song is for you too. As a means of encouragement. And we got some guys monitoring 
the feed right now. And if you have a prayer request, there's something that, that we can pray for for you, especially if it's, if it's a matter of needing to repent. You can do that now. You don't have to wait till we're all together in the same building again. We're all together in spirit. Let it be known. Let us pray for you. Yesterday, something beautiful happened here at this building. One person put to death an old man of sin and was born again in Christ. Another person rededicated themselves to Christ and their, their, their faithful life renewed. And that can happen for you too. And if you, if you have a need to be baptized, we will do whatever we need to do to make that happen. If we can study with you, we'll study with you in person. We'll study with you online. We've got people to do that. Let us know. Whatever way you may need to respond, would you do so while we sing?
um, lead this congregation, distribute this money. We pray, Father, that we will do so in the, in the way that is best. Give us wisdom in all that we do for your cause, that your light will shine in this community and throughout the world. For we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Also, right after services this morning at 11.10, uh, Charles Clark will have his class on Hebrews. And if you would, check your email and Facebook page, and there will be a link there. It's very easy to sign into. And um, Charles has prepared a class. He always does an excellent job. And um, please uh, plan to attend that um, class. Again, we want to thank Michael for an excellent lesson this morning. We greatly appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, special thanks to Alton, um, both Altons really, but Alton for, um, for getting everything going this morning for our Facebook Live. There was some difficulty with that, and we greatly appreciate them for doing that. Yeah. We'll sing number 216 is our last song of the morning. Before our closing prayer. He leadeth me, O blessed God, O words with empty comfort brought. He was raised again on the third day, and that he was he was witnessed by those who saw him on earth, Lord, before he ascended. And we're thankful that we can know that he now sits at your right hand, and that he he makes intercession for us, and that it's through him that we have the know, the knowledge, the hope, and the promise of an eternal life with you. We're thankful for that promise and for everything that it means to us, Lord. We know that we. Oftentimes fall short, but it's through your word, through your love and your mercy that we're made whole. 
We ask you to continue to be with us, Lord, and keep us safe, keep us healthy. May we make every decision 